Hello everyone, my name is Hossein Musay Faraz. Today I'm talking with Gloria Ruiz. Yeah. Uh, Gloria is studying in Master Photography Study and Practice at Folkwang University of Art. Uh, maybe you want to tell us in uh, which field you are working now. Well, right now I'm preparing for my master arbeit. I've been working with my personal archive for the last 18 months, I think, ever since I started with Folkwang. Um, I applied with my personal archive that um, it's kind of like all the pictures I've taken ever since I started with photography, which was when I was 16 years old in mm -hmm. 2006. So one day I realized I had this large amount of photos and I was just like, Maybe there's something in here that can become something else. And I applied here, and I've been working on that um, ever since. Mm. Uh, and uh, what path uh, did you take to get in photography and here in Folkman? Well, those are two very different questions. <laughs> so um, it's very interesting because I could have answered that very differently one year ago. So. Um, um, in my during the 18 months that I've been in Germany, I've discovered that my brain is very visual, that um, that's how I process life. So I think it was kind of like very logical that I went into photography. Um, when I was little, I used to draw a lot. I wanted to be a painter. And when I was a teenager, I discovered photography. And I was like, this is even better because this is such a like you can take this with so much detail and give meaning. And then I fell in love with photojournalism and I wanted to be a photojournalist. I think that's a phase of every Latin American photographer. And I didn't really, I went to study something else and photography was just something that I did for myself. Um, now I see it like kind of a visual journal, even annotations. And in the pandemic, um, when I was in, living in San Jose, Costa Rica, one day I woke up and I was like, I've always wanted to go and study in Germany. And I was thinking, what should I study in Germany? And I got in communication with the DAD office, the Akademische Austauschdienst. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, the lady told me that they had like artist visas, artist uh, scholarships, I'm sorry. And she encouraged me to um, apply with this portfolio that was going to be seen in Bonn by a board. And then I got the scholarship and mm -hmm. I started like looking into which university I wanted to go. And Folk One just kept coming up <laughs> mm -hmm. because I wanted to go to Berlin. But um, when I saw the program in Folk One, I realized that they had this, this kind of mixture that I wanted because I've always wanted to go deeper in photography. I like theory a lot and being here in Fold One has taught me that actually I think that theory is something that matters to me a lot and I like to explore. So I think a lot of like um it was like Schicksal man Kotisagen mm. weißt du? <laughs> You have also a designer background. Yes, I studied graphic design. My parents are economists. <laughs> So they were not very convinced when I was little and I was always saying that I wanted to be an artist. And then I didn't want to be an artist. I just wanted to consume art. Mm -hmm. So um, when I started with graphic design, I hated it. <laughs> I actually hated the whole career. <laughs> but I realized that having to study that in Nicaragua was such a huge challenge. We have very bad education. And some careers are better than others, but graphic design was very like, um, the pencil was really old. And that's when I realized that whatever I need, I wanted to know or be was going to have to be something that I did my own research of. So mm -hmm. I kind of like taught myself the whole deal. And then I went and worked with graphic design and my perspective changed because I was engaged with, uh, social development design mm -hmm. and we used to I used to work in this little uh, agency and we work with like feminist groups 
with NGOs. Um, I learned a lot about my own country there. Mm -hmm. And also like the flexibility that design brings to actually create betterness. We used to like, for example, design workshops and material for people who barely know how to read and write. And now uh, these, uh, this design background yes. help you in photography or not? Of jeden Fall, yeah. Actually, I encountered that in the Aufbau from Stop Over 2023. Uh, I had like this kind of a uh, crossroads point in the Prüfungs uh, last year in which, um, so I always considered that what I wanted to do with my master arbeit, I still want to do this. It's a photo book, um, but it looked very different back then. So I was like, yeah, but I don't really want to just lay out the book and plop it into a pedestal in the museum. So I started just thinking about how to represent the stage of the work that I am with my archive. Mm -hmm. And I started like going around, presenting in seminars. And I started having this idea. But when I first went to the museum one week before of the exhibition, I had all the pieces, but they were not together. And that moment, I realized that the vitrines that I had in front of me were a design problem. I need to have this idea, and I have this format, and I need to make this work. I need to make it communicable. I need that people get something out of this. So that means that this is like the interface of communication between me and the audience. And it's my responsibility that there's a message here. So I think that that's an artwork that was designed um, visually. Mm -hmm. And that made me take a, some decisions that were design decisions more than artistic decisions. And I think they supported the artistic concept that I was going for with my piece. Yeah, um, how many pictures <laughs> was at the museum? Everybody keep asking that. <laughs> yes, because uh, I saw that and I I want to know how many pictures was there. Well, I mean, in one hand, I like the mystery and the other hand, I'm very transparent about my processes. So um, that's a structure that I built that is the representation of the of the archive. So I could have filled that actually with photographs, but I decided to use every print that I've printed here mm -hmm. in Folkbank for everything in 18 months. Also like a kind of like a representation for myself, like how far we have come. And also to not create more garbage. So, I mean, there are less pictures than you think, but the other... The the open layer is um, about five hundred pictures. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, there are uh, many self portraits. Yeah. Um, why? Why? <laughs> I ask myself the same question sometimes. <laughs> so um, I started with photography with a very hard story that I'm not to share this day, but. Yeah, let's yeah. say that it was a rough start. <laughs> but um, when I was younger, when I was 15, I had this thing in which I was, I felt like nobody understood me and like the world was un incomprehensible, you know? And my mom was like, that's just being 16, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Nobody understands you and the world is terrible, you know? But then with the years, it became apparent that I wasn't as functional as I appeared to be. So um, I like... I got like a mental illness diagnosis when I was 21. I was diagnosed bipolar. And yeah, there was an answer. And I kept like coping around this mental illness, mental illness mm -hmm. with a photography. And it has a lot, it had a lot to do with the self. Like, who is this person? Who is this person? And what, who is she really? And then a decade later, when I was 31, I realized that I might be autistic and that I might have ADHD. So it a new journey started. And actually, now that I'm engaging with other late diagnosed uh, neurodivergent and autistic women, I understand that this is an experience that is mm -hmm. not common in society, but very common for us, like this looking for the self, because it's very dense to, to explain to it. But I mean, 
li the literature that I've read supports my belief that uh, autistic women struggle because society just like puts us in boxes that maybe we don't belong. So we are just performing all the time. Mm -hmm. So I think that this kind of like, this felt wrong for so long that I just had to like gather evidence that sometime in the future I might understand what was going on. And actually, I can tell myself from 17 years ago mm -hmm. that that's actually true, that this all these clues that she left in photographs, in journals, in writing, in poetry, did help me to understand what was really in the bottom of this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, how did your interest in photography change during your studies? I think that I realized that I'm, I'm not built to, to be an artistic photographer, you know? Um, I feel like this, uh, well, coming to Germany is, sometimes Germans get offended by this, but I tell them that their, their art is very German. And what I mean is not <laughs> that is, uh, that's a bad thing. What I mean is I feel such envy that they have like such strong roots, you know, like in philosophy, in history, in literature, in art. And I think that that adds a richness that sometimes can be a little bit hermetic, you know? It it just stays in the German-speaking world. Mm -hmm. In Latin America, we are kind of like the opposite. We have these shallow roots, and we are not one thing. We are like this chimera of, like, the whole world, pretty much. And so we have a lot of influence from Europe, uh, from the USA, and stuff like that. So I think that my my my... My building in photography has been very chaotic. And here in Germany, I realized that for me, seeing my fellow um, photographer, artistic photographers, uh, peers, uh, engage in such craftsmanship for their pictures, it's not something that comes natural out of me. So mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm very sloppy with my pictures. I'm not like <laughs> meticulous and, and, and stuff like that. And definitely that made me realize that photography has other meanings for me. And that's why I think that I've been more engaged and I feel that I'm actually thinking about a future in which writing about photography is more important to me than actually photographing. Then I think uh, you are uh, very interested in theory and history of photography. Yes. I am very interested in theory and in history of photography. I think that's something that I could never have had in Nicaragua or Costa Rica or Central America. Um, I think it's important. So I crashed the colloquium <laughs> the other day and I learned a lot about format especially. And I think that this is kind of something that I needed when I was younger because uh, there was there's a lot that that I've seen in theory that was like part of my, you know, kind of intuition, such like hunches, such as things that you perceive, but you rarely discover the world, you know, there's probably theory about everything in the world at this point. And I'm not very interested in just becoming an academic and just engaging with uh, things that have to be with Europe. I want to learn theory and see how can I, I can design mm -hmm. theory about my context. I want to, I would like to have work that actually helps uh, Central America to have like better, a better articulated artistic discourse around photography and to write about us from our perspective. Mm -hmm. After having grown up with a lot of images from my own country that were part of like this exoticism um, from Europeans and Americans. That's how we grew up. That's the view that we have of ourselves in Nicaragua. Good. Um, what's your next project? My next project? <sighs> Gute Frage. Um, well, the master arbeit, definitely. Mm -hmm. Like um, engaging in writing it and designing it and laying it out and producing it. Um, Honestly, my next project is to find um, kind of my place here in Nordrhein-Westfalen, in 
I don't know if an institution or a project or by myself, but to see what I can do with photography here in Germany because mm -hmm. I want to stay here. Um, my next personal project that I'm working right now is to engage with an analog photographic club in Nicaragua that is called Managua Lab. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to curate something with them and exhibit it here in Germany, but not just like sitting with them and gathering pretty pictures, but to actually have a process of reflection with people who are doing analog photography in Nicaragua, which sounds like nothing here, but it's very hard. Uh, you cannot buy film in Nicaragua. They sell, they sell it. They have to bring it from Costa Rica or the USA. So this is something that it's done entirely from love because mm -hmm. it's, it's, this pe these are people that love to photograph and they are doing this beautiful thing in such a hard context. And I think that there's something there that it's worth it. So that I would love to have enough money. So if you have money, give me money to do that, <laughs> um, <sighs> to actually build a project that can connect, um, Nicaragua with Germany, but not from this perspective that we are like this poor country and we need help, mm -hmm. but also that there are people with talent and everybody benefits from a cultural exchange. Uh, what techniques uh, do you use? Digital? I'm a digital photographer, 100%. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm not a film person. I'm not, I don't have the patience. Why? Oh my God. Every time that I, that I have a black and white roll in my hands, I'm like, will this roll survive my Envicloom? <laughs> <laughs> because I am so sloppy that I've ruined so many films at this point. Uh, yeah. But I, I do like, um, I do like, um, uh, film, but because it forces me to slow down a little bit. Because with digital, mm -hmm. you, sometimes you can shoot before you think, you know? But yeah. Um, uh... And our last question, what's your favorite artist or photographer? Oh my God, there are so many. And when people ask me this question, I just go blank. <laughs> Name one or two. I can tell you who made me go into art, and that would be Frida Kahlo. I know it's a very stereotypical answer, but um, when I was 15 years old, I was in a lot of pain, and I saw this woman that just had this terrible accident when she was a teenager that left her in pain her entire life. And she lived life and she decided to do beautiful things ar around it and about it and from it. And her last painting, it's some watermelons. She painted that just before she died. And these watermelons have a saying that it's Viva la Vida. It's like, um, Viva la Vida is like live life, I guess, something like that. And I think that that's such a, that's so strong. And I feel that art is that for me, you know, like mm -hmm. to transform things that you experience in life in something that you can share with others. Very good. Uh, thank you for your time. Sehr gerne. <laughs> And bye. <laughs>